Hi everyone and welcome to Four Women, Four Decades Life Lesson Conversations. In this series we're talking to people around the world about the lessons they've learned that have helped them to see life and the challenges they face from a new perspective. Now today I'm speaking to a very special guest who is my younger brother Dan. Now Dan is currently in his fourth year of his physics degree at Bristol University and he has spoken on numerous occasions on various podcasts and events about mental health but also he's really keen today to talk a bit more about identity and particularly identity in the LGBT community. So thanks Dan for joining me today. Yeah my pleasure. I'm super excited um, to speak on this uh, podcast or um, video and um, yeah like like you said I really want to start talking more about identity and my personal experience in how my sort of um, relationship with identity has changed over the years so um, I'm part of the LGBT plus community um, as a gay man and um, my relationship with that has changed so much since when I was a teenager when I first sort of clocked to where I am now and uh, actually this year, uh, so my fourth year of physics uh, at Bristol, I was lucky enough to be the president for the LGBT plus society. And I felt like such a um, sort of a full circle uh, sort of feeling where actually I've been in a position where I can help out sort of other people coming to university and um, sort of feel more comfortable in their own identity. So that's why I want to sort of come on here and just speak about that. So I know how difficult it is to um, feel comfortable within your own identity and your own skin and um, if I can sort of help anyone with that then um, I feel like I really should. Yeah no, and thanks so much in advance for kind of being open about this and it's not something that you kind of have talked about a huge amount um, so really, really appreciate you you doing that. So, so yeah, so I just wondered whether you could maybe share a bit more about um, that whole kind of issue of identity, because we were, we were just talking before this about all the kind of the, the labels that were given throughout life, um, whether you're, whether that's being gay, whether it's like for me when I had an eating disorder, whether it's, I mean, we, we, we have so many different labels and they can often affect us in quite significant ways so I just wonder whether you could maybe say a bit about I guess how your relationship with identity has kind of changed over the years um, and what difference that has made for you. Yeah so um, when I first realised that um, I was I was gay it was probably just in sort of year eight, uh, year seven, year eight sort of period and um, even sort of back then, so I'm 21 now, so that was maybe when I was um, 13, I'm not sure. But uh, even then, actually, the, the way that sort of LGBT plus was represented in media and in sort of the wider population is, is very different from what it is now. Um, back then, um, legal marriage for gay couples wasn't, le or it wasn't legal uh, in the UK. And um, so back then, there was no real representation apart from the sort of stereotypes that you see on sitcoms or potentially the sort of the one-off um sort of arty movie where um the gay characters always like depressed or they always have to go through abuse or whatever so for me there wasn't any sort of good connotations uh linked to sort of being gay and being part of the lgbt plus community it was all sort of negative or is all you have to be a certain way you have to be gay enough you have to be camp enough you have to be blah 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 and that filled me with such um, sort of conflicting feelings of knowing that, oh yeah, I have to be proud about this because it's all about being gay and proud and being open. Yet I didn't feel that at all. I felt an immense amount of shame really because in the playground, all I heard was, oh yeah, that's so gay, stop being gay. Um, uh, yeah, all these words which are not, not nice. So I only associated that part of my identity with feelings of um, negative. Um, so that had a real sort of impact on me. And I didn't really explore that part of my identity. Uh, I didn't really sort of reason it through that much because I tried to sort of oppress it as much as possible. And I think that's what a lot of people do. 
um, because they don't want to feel like they're an outsider and they don't want to feel that who they are is intrinsically wrong. Um, because that's what, even if we're not told that directly to our face, that's what we learn. Um, either with um, bullying or the absence, like the vacuum of representation. Um, so if something's not spoken about, then you kind of assume it's wrong um, or it's a taboo. Um, and actually saying the words, I'm gay, I didn't think I was able to do that out loud until maybe sort of during sixth form. Um, so I first, I, well, I came out to family sort of during my GCSEs, uh, early A-levels. And that was a massive, massive, massive deal. And for anyone within the LGBT community, that is a big stepping stone. And you'll always remember that moment um, because it's mixed of mixture of the sort of the intense anxiety of what the reaction is going to be. And I have the most loving family in the world. And even then, I was still really anxious. Um, and it's just looking back on that moment, it seems crazy how I was able to be in that mind frame mindset of like, Oh my God, what if my family are going to like reject me or even though I, f I knew and I was lucky enough to have a family, which I knew wouldn't do that. I still had all these thoughts coming through thinking of the worst possible possible situation or um, what happens if I say it out loud and that means that I'll always be like this forever. And that was, there's no magical way that I'll suddenly, um, not big anymore but um so it was it was a massive massive moment and that was the first steps I took to actually um sort of affirm my identity and actually be happy within my skin and um so I'd say the next sort of the period which I sort of I, I looked back at my identity and I felt happy with it was during university uh sixth form was a bit of a weird time but university um, I was able to mingle with a lot more people who shared my identities and um, being around people who who had gone through a common experience like that was incredible and um, yeah I'll never forget some of the moments when I would talk about stuff uh, talk about uh, so, you know back of during GCSEs when you had all the everyone talking about like who they fancy and they're going out with who and so I never felt like involved with that at all because I was like that's that's not for me that's not my sort of um, I'll never have that and actually talking about those sorts of things but with um, within sort of the gay culture was such a surreal experience because it was like I, I almost felt like I'd missed out on that kind of element of my teenagehood. Um, so I was able to sort of make up for it somehow at university. But um, comparing how I am now and my relationship with the identity of being gay now versus when I was younger is just polar opposite. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting sort of looking, looking back then and I felt like I had to, um, I had to be a certain way to mean that I was sort of gay enough. And I think during sick form, that's, that's what I felt. Um, because in my head, the, the, so the stories which I linked to my identity of being gay, um, transformed from ones of feeling kind of shameful and horrible and blah, blah, blah to then being like, oh, now I need to, I need to act a certain way to um, deserve this label. Um, then to sort of university where I felt a much more like, I actually know what, what my identity is, is means it's only what it is for me. And actually we have these sort of common words that we use for labels um, and for a lot of people, they all sort of share like a certain sort of characteristics. So for example, like being gay, I'm, I'm sort of romantically attracted to men. Um, but actually that identity to myself is 100% unique. So there are infinite amount of identities because we all have our own relationship with those identities and our relationship to them intrinsically changes them. So actually my experience is 100% unique. And I think that's where we get a lot of fear is that when 
we start comparing our experiences and our identities to other people and we feel like we're not living up to it or we're not um we're sort of letting ourselves down or we're letting our community down or um yeah we're like we're not proud enough or we're not um we're, we're too yeah we're, we're too closed but actually we need to i just stop the stop the comparisons and stop stop the so sort of beating ourselves up about um uh our identities not being enough because that th there's no such thing as like being enough like you are whole you are complete no matter where you are on that journey so back when i was um sort of pre gcse's before i came out and i felt like i wasn't enough like looking back now i i was enough then i was i just had a lot of stories which i attached to my identity which i now see were were untrue and I, I completely believe them now. Uh, back then, I completely believe them, but I know now that they were untrue. And um, yeah, yeah it, I've learned to just question those parts and actually just realize that no matter where I am, I'm always going to be enough of who I am. Mm. Sorry, I'm rambling on a bit, but <laughs> no, that, I just love listening to you and like what what an incredible thing to truly know at the age of 21 like i think people people go through life and not and not know that and it's such it's such an important thing and it's something that i think we've both kind of gone on a bit of a journey with over the years because i mean and I've, I've spoken about this before about how when i had my eating disorder that i i was living up to that later trying to live up to that label but I, I felt like I was constantly falling short because I was never an inpatient. Therefore, I was, I wasn't ever a proper anorexic. Yeah, so only like an amateur. Exactly, exactly. And that, and that was my, that was my truth at that time. That, that's what felt really real for me. So it's just really interesting hearing that for in like a kind of a, a different context, I guess, or in relation to a different label because I think it it just shows you that it doesn't actually matter what that label is. We still have this, this kind of funny relationship with them where we we take them on and kind of, yeah, like, like you were saying, create these stories and sometimes unhelpful stories about them and then live our lives by them, often unknowingly. But I think yeah. having like you realizing that it, it feels like it, that's been quite a kind of a breakthrough in terms of how you're now how you now see yourself um i wonder like has has that also kind of changed how you see other people yeah that it's what it's done for me with my relationships with other people is it's made me feel so much more compassion and empathy for everyone because it's no matter where they are um, they're doing the best that they can at that current moment. And I think because I was so judgmental myself in the past and, um, I sort of beat myself up over it. And actually that's so, that's so, so draining that, um, that constant fight that actually, and we all go through that in, in sort of different, um, sort of magnitudes, but actually looking at someone, even if someone that you, don't particularly like it's like wow they're they're doing the best that they can and that sounds that can sound really um sort of condescending but it's like everyone's on their own sort of path to whatever and they're they're all they're all physic they're all intrinsically okay they all they're all enough um so rather than going down a route of thinking like Oh God, like they're really, they're really pissing me off and they're not doing this enough. And they're, um, and I've, I've had those, many of those moments this year. Um, but actually just being able to take a step back and think, no, it's, they're all doing that. They're all doing the, like the best, we're all doing the best that we can. Um, and really it's the expectations that I have, which maybe other people I don't, sort of answer living up to but then that's that's in my that's in my own experience 
that's nothing to do with them. Mm. It has nothing, that is not at all. Um, like what I th sort of think about people has nothing to do with them. And it's like, well, what, what people think of me has nothing to do with me either. Um, but it's being able to take a step back and rather getting dragged into those sort of feelings and the stories of thinking like, oh, they've been saying this and I really disagree with this and they're, they're shit and blah, blah, blah. But actually taking a step back and thinking, no, we're all, we all have our human experiences, which are completely different. Mm -hmm. And almost it's a celebration of those, those differences and how different we, we sort of look at reality. Um, was we all think that we all have this common sort of experience of life, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, that's why people so disagree with each other so much is because we, we say that, look at this, this is this. And then other people say, no, it's not. What are you thinking? Are you stupid? Um, and I think it's, I just think it's a testament to the complexities of, of humans um, that we're able to have those complete different experiences and rather getting dragged down in it and fighting, I think what's made a big difference for me is just having that, that empathy. Empathy doesn't mean that you agree with people. And I think empathy means that you're able to step into someone else's shoes and be able to um, try and see things through their eyes. So like, for example, um, this is probably gonna seem quite controversial, but there was, I remember I went on a date with a guy in second year and a this was at night and a car drove past and it was filled with these like lads and they um they shouted like some slurs at us and i was like really sort of shocked in that moment but rather than sort of going down the route of thinking yeah they're right i'm i'm this that and the other i almost felt some elements of compassion for them because i was thinking they're in their current state of mind they're doing the best that they can even if it's far from what I have the expectations it, like in my head, they're still, they're still enough, that they're still okay. And that sounds completely crazy because it's like, they shouldn't be saying that. And I think, yeah, they should be, but I can't go into their heads and then just stop them from doing, doing something like that. Um, and it doesn't mean that I can't empathize with them. It's not sympathizing or agreeing with them, but it's being able to have that that human to human compassion um, and it's a really difficult really really difficult thing to do so there's so many people that I, I don't think I would ever be able to agree with or even sort of empathize with but it's uh it's just taking taking a moment to actually step back and see the sort of deeper connection mm. yeah that's I mean that's amazing to be able to to see that I think often like in the moment it's when when an incident happens a bit like that that it can be quite we have we have a kind of like knee-jerk reactions that we we go to to respond whether that's anger or resentment or shame or whatever it is but but actually being able to see yeah kind of see past the actions and actually see that person for for who they are which is a human being who is kind of a bit tangled up in some unhelpful thinking and is kind of coming from a place where where maybe well from a position that we don't agree with but actually that's their reality in that moment yeah. and so i think that's that's so powerful i mean imagine if imagine if everyone was able to do that all the time that would that the impact that would have would be incredible yeah because it means that say if they were in a in that, that in, if they were in that place the people that sort of shouted at me then they would think that okay i don't necessarily agree that they're holding hands or whatever that's their reality but it means that they don't need to act on that mm -hmm. yeah um and it means that they're able to see past um the, the fact that I'm, I'm gay or whatever, and the two guys holding hands um, and be able to have that empathy again. Um, and it is, it is a really difficult thing to talk about, I think, because I'm, I'm in a very kind of privileged place within the LGBT uh, plus community, um, being a um, gay cisgender male. And I'm 
I'm sort of very aware of of my kind of position in that and um but I, I still kind of I still feel that on a sort of deep level that we have we are all humans and we all have completely different stories and we have completely different um we're all in completely different places but there has to be some sort of underlying foundation that connects us all and I'm not a particularly like spiritual person as a sort of physicist and I'm a very sort of logical, but I still, I still kind of see that in a way that we're, we're on a, on a, a massive bit of a rock hurtling through space in a vacuum. And the universe is such a sort of unpleasant place where anything could sort of quickly knock us out. I mean, we're, we're going through currently a, a pandemic and that shows the fragility of the world and i think that things like that sort of put some it puts things in perspective that actually um where we have so much commonality um compared to sort of the stars out there and the planets and the gases like we are all conscious beings and we all are sort of made of love in that way um and everything on top is all like the stories and the the kind of the identities and the um, all the kind of the extra sort of complications that we that we have that make us so beautiful and unique. Um, but there's a so there's a quotation from uh, RuPaul, um, not a massive fan personally, but it's still um, uh, a, a really good quote. So it's um, we're all born naked and the rest is drag. And um, I don't know whether Ru was sort of knew the sort of depth of that as as sort of she said it, but it's the fact that we're all come from this um this common place we're all sort of born from the universe which sounds very deep but it's not um sounds nerdy <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> um yeah we're, we're, all, we're all like born from the universe but and everything on top that makes us seem so so different actually we are not all so different and we should yeah be celebrating the um yeah, our, our differences, our differences and uniqueness, rather than being sort of fearful of them. And it's such a um, a beautiful journey, even if it's a hard journey, like the journey that I sort of personally went through. Um, I'm so grateful for it um, because I can see the beauty in it, rather than wanting to sort of push it aside and forget about it. Mm. Um, so yeah, and I think, and I think it's also just like realizing and like remembering that whatever it is we're going through or whatever we, whatever we think our identity is like that that doesn't have to define us um whereas i think for a lot of people and from like for me in the past i really really did but again kind of using my eating disorder as an example that was my entire identity at the time it was it was who I, who i was how i saw myself and that was kind of the end of the story there wasn't room for anything else so i think i mean it'd be interesting to hear what you think from from your perspective in the lgbt community about how people maybe or maybe you have experience of it when you were younger how you felt that that maybe like defined you or how you see it maybe other people defining themselves by by their gender identity their sexuality whatever it might be and i guess where where that can sometimes become an issue when we when we forget that actually it's not the entirety of who we are and there's yeah. there's so much more there's so much more to us and then actually that when we like you were saying at the start when we start to make comparisons to against our identity and others where sometimes it can that can become unhelpful mm. Yeah, no, and I think it's sort of really interesting when we sort of try to define our who we are. Um, so there's a sort of a, a game we can play where you say, who are you? And then you say, oh, I'm, I'm like in, in the intro, like I'm Daniel, I fourth year physics. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, but who are you really? And then you keep going down and down and down. And then you actually realize who you are is very in intangible. Um which sort of creates its own sort of um, own sort of crisis, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, that the the identities that we have. So for me, being sort of a gay man, um, I 
I think the the problems which which come with the attachment to identities is when we have the um, so the insecurity attached to them and the um, the unhelpful stories that we have attached with them. So, for example, if I was constantly attached to the the feelings of like the shame, and if I went to the logic of saying that, so I am gay, gay is shame, therefore I am shame. Um, it's a very kind of easy trap to be in, where suddenly you're completely confined to what your idea of that identity is and what um, what kind of emotions and feelings are attached to that identity. Because an identity in itself is, um, it doesn't have a sort of intrinsic sort of value in a way, um, in the sense of we we enrich it with um, our feelings of, for example, my, like my feelings of pride and the, the sense of community that I have. Um, the fact that I'm attracted to other men doesn't automatically equal that, but I, I've been able to sort of expose or uh, sort of associate my sort of my experience of being within the sort of LGBT community and the uh, amazing sort of experiences I've gone through related to that. Therefore, I've um, I've enriched that identity with those feelings. Um, so I think that it can be really un it can be unhelpful when um, uh, if you've gone through experiences not like that, if you've gone through negative experiences that you um have sort of linked to your identity then it can just become a bit of like a vicious cycle where actually if you're feeling really shit about who you are then it'll almost be that actually you'll be sort of in a cycle of everything will always be that kind of that shit way because anything negative that happens then it'll be a confirmation that you were right along and actually um, so, for example, if I'm if I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see some accounts sort of trolling someone um, using sort of gay slurs, then it could be very easy for me to say, "Oh, yeah, no, they're right," and actually, my identity is that, and it is it is bad, and it is um, this, that, and the other. Um, so, it can be a very easy cycle. But I think the important thing is to just start like questioning those stories. Um, which is it's difficult to do and it, it does take time like it took me years and years um, but it is possible um, I think that's um, just sort of with like so I can only speak about my own identity and my, my own experiences um, but it is sort of important to um, almost yeah, was, with identities it's, it's not because there are an infinite amount of them um, it's almost having the kind of the the knowledge that actually if you settle on identity then it doesn't have to be static um, and that that's, there is a complete sort of fluidity there so actually say for example if um, I have the identity of being a gay man that actually in the future it doesn't mean that I'll never be attracted to a woman or have a romantic relationship with a woman I have no idea um, someone said that um, so are humans more complex than cheese? So yes, humans more complex than cheese. Think how, how many varieties of cheese there are, like human and sort of like gender identities and sexuality identities. Um, they're going to be so many more than anything that we can sort of perceive. Um, so actually, just confining them into the boxes of being gay, being uh, bi, being straight, being you know, uh, all the other identities. Um, it's this sort of argument where it's great to have them because it means that we have a community and we have things to be like proud of and we have um, we can f like fight politically and campaign throughout using those identities but then also on the other on the other hand it's like there are an infinite amount of them so it's it's impossible to actually completely define them um, as the sort of um, quantitative things mm. um, and actually sometimes you can go through a cycle of thinking that if I am, if I am gay, then I have to fit into the characteristics of being gay in mm. order to stay in that box. Yeah. It's, it's the whole kind of living up to the labels, isn't it? Yeah. But 
Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really glad you raised that point about um, identity not being static, because that was kind of the next thing I wanted to to say, which was that, yeah, they can they can change and evolve all the time, kind of moment to moment. Um, and that doesn't have to be, uh, I mean, there are so many different facets to identity or that the make up our identity. It can be what colour we prefer. It can be... Um, how we how we dress how we like we, there are so many different ways and I feel like uh, this is something I've, I've spoke about before that actually sometimes I can wake up and want to be um, a real tomboy and I'm actually wearing my boyfriend's shirt at the moment but then there are other days when I can wake up and want to be really feminine and um, kind of more girly and, and dress accordingly and act accordingly. So actually, like, I don't I don't necessarily define myself by either of those those things, but those are still part of my identity and they can change from from moment to moment. So actually. I think I think often when we're giving when we're given labels or we take on labels that we we often cling to them and by doing so we don't allow them to change and evolve if that makes sense it, yeah it's um i think giving sort of space to breathe in a way and mm -hmm. um it's so i i so sort of being say um like being sort of a, like a cis man i'm like i, I kind of i i know um I'm sort of aware of like of my kind of own like identity and um I can see I can see kind of how with other people how sort of the sort of the, the fluidity the fluidity that they experience and um it's yeah it's sort of knowing what identities that you're comfortable with but also being able to um yeah just let it let, let it sort of evolve and sort of grow and change without the fear of um feeling either kind of you're letting down the the or like being an imposter in a way mm. um so for example i know um a few people who they sort of questioning whether they are um sort of gay or whether they're bi or um whether it's just there's something that they're sort of going through right now and i've, I've gone through the same experience and there's a lot of, sort of stress involved um involved with uh thinking like, oh God, am I this, am I that? Because if I, but if I say I'm this, then actually I'm, I think I'm this instead later, then people are going to think I'm lying or whatever. Um, so there is a, it almost feels like there's a rush to, um, to select the sort of correct label in order to not let other people down or, um, but actually your kind of identities have nothing to do with other people. Um, and what you're feeling in one moment doesn't mean that you'll always be feeling it. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be that the, the feelings that I have um, right now of being feeling like proud about my community doesn't mean that I'll, I'll have moments in the future where I'll feel that I feel those insecurities again. Um, and it meant that when I was younger, the feelings that I had about feeling shameful, I always projected that into the future and think and was thinking like, I'll always feel like this. Mm -hmm. um and it's the same with like with my identity that if i if i currently f um feel my identity as this doesn't mean it'll always be that static and it won't always be like this mm -hmm. um i think it, so i've got to be careful because there's a sort of rhetoric within um sort of anti-lgbt plus culture which is that oh it's just a phase um and there is a lot of connotation with saying that oh yeah this is just something that you're kind of experimenting and going through and you'll you'll turn out kind of regular normal um and this isn't that at all this isn't saying that um everything always converges on straightness like being lgbt doesn't revolve around straightness same as say um um so women don't revolve around men or bme culture doesn't revolve around whiteness it's that we're the lgbt sort of culture we're um we're allowed we're allowed to sort of evolve and redefine ourselves like constantly um 
without kind of the fear that um without the fear that if we say we we actually think that oh no i, I want to say marry a woman doesn't mean that i'll then be going back to being straight because that's the the end point doesn't matter it's about kind of like the the evolution and like the journey going through mm-hmm. like my sort of my lgbtness um isn't sort of defined by um either like my my current sort of identity right now or my my future ones or how i was in the past i'm no i'm no more or less lgbt than someone else within my community um and it is sort of going back to making those sort of comparisons and the 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 fear and the stress that we can associate with those sort of comparisons because mm-hmm. There are an infinite amount of identities and on a sort of much sort of just bigger picture, um, it's impossible to for us to completely define it because we don't we don't have the language to describe it anyway. Like we have to also admit that the the languages that we talk are inherently confined, restrict our identities. And actually sometimes they can be um uh sort of con- um the languages that we use can influence our identity in the first place. So for example, um, in, I can't remember what language is, but there's no words to describe being gay. Um, so if you don't have the language for it, then that's going to have a massive impact on your identity. Mm -hmm. And I think also like just going talking about sort of with like stress and stuff, um, if I, in the English language, if I say I am stressed, then that means uh, that's like, I am the embodiment of stress. Like I am this set thing mm-hmm. saying that I am gay. That almost sounds like I am this one static thing. I am this sort of physical block of gay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> physical block of gay. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of your belly. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's, it's so true. And I think I think it's also we have to be careful when we start attaching our self-worth to mm. whatever label we we give ourselves or we're given by others, because that's when we can start getting into some kind of dangerous territory, as it were, because like you were saying at the start, that if we don't feel like we're being a good enough gay person or anorexic person or mother father brother sister girlfriend boyfriend whatever it is then if we're attaching our self-worth to those identities then then we're not going to feel great about ourselves because because we're sort of doomed to fail in a way because yeah our relationship with those identities will always be changing and always be fluctuating but our self-worth have to has to be above that Mm -hmm. it's it's above all it sort of it sits here in this in the in the sense of we know that it's sort of unchanging and actually it's like sort of the, the blue sky we know that no matter what's below it it's always going to be changing but actually this this thing of our, our worth and okayness is always going to be above that and it's always going to be independent and um and unchanging and it's just our our view of it that changes like it's what yeah. sort of gets in the way yeah no exactly so i feel like that's a kind of natural place to pause i think we could talk for hours so i might get you back on to talk about various other things but thank you so much um dan for your openness and honesty i think this has been a really kind of rich conversation and i hope that other people will find it helpful as well so to those who are watching i hope you found it helpful um please do check out the other videos that we have on our youtube channel this is part of our for Women, Four Decades, Life Lesson Conversation series. So please feel free to comment below if you've enjoyed this. Um, and also don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of the new content that we're putting out.